Have you ever wondered about the history of the iconic Red Fort in Delhi? Well, let's embark on a journey together to this royal marvel. Nestled in the bustling heart of Delhi, the Red Fort, or as the locals affectionately call it, Lal Kila, stands as a majestic testament to India's rich history. This grand structure, a veritable giant red castle, was constructed centuries ago by the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan, the same visionary behind the world-renowned Taj Mahal. The Red Fort is celebrated far and wide for its unique and intricate design, an embodiment of the pinnacle of Mughal creativity. Its imposing red sandstone walls are a sight to behold, radiating an aura of power and grandeur that is simply captivating. The architectural brilliance of this edifice draws in millions from around the globe, earning it a place of prominence on the world stage. This red castle standing tall in the heart of Delhi has an intriguing tale to tell. Red Fort was not just any building, it was the palatial home for Mughal emperors. This grand residence standing in the heart of Delhi was far from an ordinary dwelling. It was an embodiment of imperial opulence and power, a symbol of the Mughal dynasty's reign. Constructed during the rule of Shah Jahan, the Red Fort was designed to inspire awe and reverence. Its colossal red sandstone walls, stretching over two kilometers in length, were not just for defense, but also a grand spectacle, signifying the might of the emperors who resided within. These towering walls, reaching a height of up to 33 meters, were a constant reminder of the formidable power of the Mughals. As you approach the fort, you're greeted by the grandeur of the Lahori Gate, one of the main entrances. This elaborate gate, adorned with intricate carvings and designs, reflects the exquisite artistry of the Mughal era. It is more than just a doorway, it's a grand welcome into the world of royal splendor. Once inside, the fort's opulence is further amplified, with a labyrinth of palaces, halls, and courtyards, each more magnificent than the last. The Red Fort was a world in itself. It was a city within a city, a place where the emperors lived, ruled, and celebrated their victories. But the fort was not just about grandeur and extravagance. Its design also reflected the deep understanding of the Mughal emperors about the fine balance between luxury and functionality. The fort's layout was meticulously planned, with separate sections for public and private affairs, ensuring the smooth running of the empire while maintaining the privacy of the royal family. The Red Fort was more than a home for the kings, it was a statement of their majesty, a testament to their power and wealth. Even today, as you walk through its magnificent gates and explore its grand courtyards, you are transported back in time to an era of royal splendor and grandeur. The Red Fort served as a grand testament to the majesty of its royal residence. Within these red walls are halls and thrones that have witnessed history, a grandeur that is almost palpable. The Red Fort houses two notable chambers that once served as the epicenters of Mughal courtly life, the Diwan i Khas and the Diwan i Am. The Diwan i Khas, translating to Hall of Private Audiences, was a space reserved for the most important of discussions and meetings. This was a place where the emperor would sit on the peacock throne, a marvel of gold, diamonds and precious stones, and converse with his courtiers, foreign dignitaries and guests. The peacock throne, named for its design adorned with peacock figures, was more than a seat. It was a symbol of the emperor's authority, a testament to the wealth and power of the empire. Today, while the original peacock throne might have been lost to history, its memory endures in the stories and legends that it has left behind. A few steps away from the Diwani Khas is the Diwani Am, or Hall of Public Audiences. This place was a testament to the democratic spirit of the Mughal Empire. Here, the emperor would sit on a raised platform and address the concerns of his subjects, dispense justice, and make important announcements. The hall, large enough to accommodate thousands, was designed with an acoustical system that allowed the emperor's voice to be heard by all present, a fitting symbol of an emperor's connection with his people. These two halls, each distinct in its purpose, together encapsulate the essence of the Mughal courtly life. They are a testament to a time when power and prestige were displayed in the grandeur of architecture and the intricacies of design. Even as centuries have passed, these halls continue to lend the Red Fort its aura of majesty and magnificence. These grand halls and thrones continue to echo the whispers of a majestic past. They stand as silent witnesses to a time of glory and grandeur, their stories forever etched in the heart of Delhi, in the heart of the Red Fort. The Red Fort has been a silent witness to landmark events in Indian history. Among these, one event stands out, etched in the annals of time. 
The year was 1947, a pivotal year in the nation's history. The reins of power were handed over from the British to the Indians, marking the dawn of a new era. The first Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, stepped onto the historic ramparts of the Red Fort. As the sun rose, casting a warm glow on the imposing red sandstone walls, Nehru unfurled the Indian flag. It was a moment of triumph, a symbol of a nation shaking off the shackles of colonial rule. This momentous event was not just a significant day, it was a turning point, a new chapter in India's story. And so every brick, every stone of the Red Fort bears the marks of a nation's journey to freedom. The Red Fort, a blend of grandeur and beauty, houses several architectural marvels. One such gem is the Pearl Mosque, or Moti Masjid, a place of serenity amidst the hustle and bustle of Delhi. With its white marble structure gleaming under the Indian sun, it is easy to see why it is called the Pearl Mosque. Intricate carvings adorn its walls, whispering tales of a bygone era when emperors prayed within its confines. Its three domes, standing tall and proud, perfectly encapsulate the essence of Mughal architecture, a testament to the skilled artisans of the time. Then, we have the life-bestowing gardens or Hayat Bakshbag. Picture this, lush green landscapes, vibrant flowers blooming in a riot of colors, the gentle murmur of water flowing through channels, all set against the backdrop of the towering red walls of the fort. The gardens were designed to mimic paradise on earth, a sanctuary for the emperors away from the rigors of ruling an empire. The Pearl Mosque and the life-bestowing gardens are just two of the many beautiful buildings nestled within the fort. Each structure, each carving, each stone tells a story. They stand as silent witnesses to the ebb and flow of history, enduring symbols of a time when the Mughal Empire was at its zenith. Every corner of the Red Fort is a testament to the exquisite taste of the Mughal era. The Red Fort is not just a historical monument, but a vibrant hub of cultural celebrations. Every year, as the calendar turns to the 15th of August, the fort dons a festive look. It becomes the epicenter of India's Independence Day celebrations, a day that marks the nation's freedom from British rule. The fort's expansive grounds come alive with a grand parade, a dazzling display of India's diverse culture and military prowess. Thousands gather, their hearts swelling with patriotic fervor, waiting to hear the Prime Minister's address to the nation. From the ramparts of this historic fort, the Prime Minister unfurls the tricolor flag, delivering a speech that echoes within these ancient walls and across the nation. It's a spectacle, a celebration, a commemoration of India's journey as a free nation. The Red Fort continues to serve as a living bridge between India's past and present. The Red Fort, a symbol of India's rich history, is a treasure that is carefully preserved. This iconic monument is not just a relic of the past, but a living testament to India's vibrant history and culture. The preservation of the Red Fort is a task of monumental importance, entrusted to the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, better known as UNESCO. The Red Fort is listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, a testament to its historical, cultural and architectural significance. The task of preserving this grand edifice is not an easy one. It requires the combined efforts of historians, architects, conservationists and many dedicated individuals. These custodians of history work tirelessly to ensure that the Red Fort retains its grandeur and charm, despite the ravages of time and the elements. They meticulously restore and maintain the intricate carvings, the grand arches and the imposing red sandstone walls ensuring that the fort remains as majestic as it was during the reign of the Mughal emperors. But the preservation of the Red Fort is not just about maintaining its physical structure, it's about preserving the stories, the events, the ceremonies and the celebrations that this fort has witnessed. It's about keeping alive the spirit of an era gone by, a time of grandeur and glory. When you visit the Red Fort, you step into a time machine, experiencing the grandeur of India's glorious past.